How to teach like a god. I've spent 11 years teaching. I've taught at kindergarten. I've taught at private schools, public schools, businesses. I've taught kids from zero years old to grannies of 68 years old. What? Pancake pie! So today I'm going to show you what I've learned so that you can become the best teacher you will ever meet and so that your students will think that you are a teaching god. Why do we all know about money laundering? What's the difference between a YouTube video and a teacher? You look at this and wonder, wh why? What's wrong? To begin with, let's talk about why we are teaching. What is the goal of this process? You need to have a clear image of what your students will have to do by the time when they are done learning from you. Do they want to start riding a bicycle? Do they want to learn how to speak another language? What is the outcome that you are teaching for? Next, let's talk about what is teaching. And as I told you before, teaching is making people learn. So if they don't learn, means you don't teach. In its simplest form, in my opinion, teaching is like making somebody connect the blocks and create something like this. Your job as a teacher is to show somebody where to get the blocks and if they have the blocks, how to connect them together to produce something new. And this is the essence of teaching. The blocks that we are using can be anything from MIST framework. What is the MIST framework? M-I-S-T. M, materials. I, information. S, skills. T, tools. As you can guess, M and T, materials and tools, are in the outer world. Information and skills, that's what's in our head. And that's what we are teaching. We are transferring information and skills from your head into the head of your students. Skills can be thought of as application of information. For example, driving, right? You can say, okay, I know how to drive and now I'm doing it. So I am applying this information. And so you can say that teaching is actually only about the transfer of information. But here is a catch. This information can be in different forms. This whole process is about making people see, hear, smell, taste or even feel the information that you need to transfer. And that in turn means that you need to make your information tangible. The easiest way to do that is to make information visual, right? So for example, we have maps, right? Why? We can see the world around us, but how do we see the world? World is abstract. And so we created maps so that we can understand what the world looks like. Now, there are actually many other ways apart from the visual representation. If you want to know more, go and look up the theory of multiple intelligences. This theory will give you a much better idea of different learning styles. And so you can tailor your teaching to the learning styles of your students. It means that you will make the perception much easier for them. One of the easiest ways to make this information tangible is by providing examples. Examples are actually more valuable than explanation. For example, if I show you this challenge, we have a yellow block, then we put green block, then we have yellow block, then we have a green block. What's the next color? We have yellow, green, yellow, green. What's the next color gonna be? You understood this without me having to explain the complexity of two different colors. I didn't have to explain anything to you, but you understood that the next color would be yellow. So this is the same approach that you can use in your teaching. Give more examples than explanation. Explanation has to be boiled down to its core and then quickly you give example, example, example. Now to explain whatever you are trying to explain, you can use several approaches. Number one is an analogy. Just like with the creeper, I showed you that teaching is like combining blocks together. 
and I showed you a creeper. This is the analogy. Another fun example is money laundering. Why do we all know about money laundering? It's because it's so simple. It's easy to imagine and it's easy to remember. Another approach is framework. What is a framework? Maslow's hierarchy of needs. You can imagine it as a pyramid. Easy, everybody knows it because it's so simple. This is a visual representation of a complex idea. Another possible approach would be to use acronyms. Just like I mentioned MIST, M-I-S-T, Materials, Information, Skills and Tools, you know SMART goals. Specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, time-bound, right? You know it, why? Because it's easy to remember. Another way is to use a saying. This caters to the linguistic type of learning. Have you heard, don't trouble trouble until trouble troubles you? Of course you've heard it, and of course you know it, because this is a complex idea wrapped into a simple, memorable saying. Another fun saying I heard was, when teaching English, you explain that Q and U go together. Q and U stick like glue. Fun? Yes. Easy to remember? Yes. Easy to remember means good. Another possible approach you can take is to tell a story. Story is a wonderful venue for you to convey almost anything. You can weave into story many different intelligences from the multiple intelligences theory. For example, you have relationship between people. You can have feelings. And into the story, you can input whatever information you want. It's not a surprise that fiction is much more popular than non-fiction in terms of, let's say, movies. People don't go to cinema to watch documentaries, right? They want to see fiction. They want to see a story. So by now, I hope you have a better idea of how to present information so that your learners will perceive it. Not just understand, not just listen, but perceive it as real. Next, it's our job to check. Because again, if they didn't learn, it means we didn't teach. So we have to make sure that they learned. How do we do that? Two simple approaches. Number one is we ask our students to explain it in their own words. Of course, many people can just remember what we said and then say it back to us. No, they have to explain it in their own words. Another way is they can give us an example. For example, <laughs> for example, we are teaching this, right? So we have yellow, green, yellow, green, yellow. And then we ask them to create the same pattern, but with different colors, with different shapes, with different blocks, okay? If they can do that, good job, they understand it. If they can't, this is where the exciting part starts. Because without this part of teaching, teachers are not necessary. Imagine this, what's the difference between a YouTube video and a teacher? The difference is giving feedback, making sure that the student understands. And so that is your primary goal your primary job is to actually give the feedback, not to present the information. Now, if the students didn't understand, then what it means is they don't have the blocks. For example, if you don't have enough blocks, you can't make a creeper. And so you look at the outcome, you ask them to perform an action, as I told you, and they produce something like this. And you look at this and you wonder, why? What's wrong? Well, of course, it's easy to understand here what's wrong. There are not enough blocks. Then you give the blocks. Yay, tada, we finished. Good job. But in real life, you have to find which blocks are missing. You need to understand the content of what you're teaching quite well so that then you can easily understand what's missing. And in that case, you have to switch up the way you present the information. For example, you were teaching an analogy now you tell a story. You are using an acronym, now you use framework. Then you try the same process again. Another way is for you to use a different intelligence. If, let's say, your students don't really like music, well, maybe they would like to write it, or maybe they would like to 
dance it out. You have to kind of cover different types of input systems. As I told you, eyes, ears, nose, mouth, body, and different intelligences. Again, you can look at the screen. There are many intelligences. If you want to know more, go check it. I will create a new video about the theory of multiple intelligences, but that's going to be later. For now, you are on your own. You can check it out. And that's basically it. If you can do this, you will. I guarantee you will be better than 70, maybe 80% of teacher around you. Especially if you can combine this knowledge with the information I shared before about how to motivate your students. If they want to learn, if they trust you, and now if you present the information in an easy way, of course they will learn from you. Of course they will understand. And of course they will want to learn from you more. It's going to be like a religion. They will trust you. They will believe in your ability to teach. And that's why I'm saying, if you teach like this, you will teach like a god. If you like this video, click the like button. To spread the word about this video, about this channel, so that more people can learn how to be a better teacher, how to be a better person.